I'm Christine Persichetti with this current news update. The city is bailing out after Wednesday night's fast moving remnants of Ida raced up the East Coast, killing more than a dozen people in New York and New Jersey alone. For the first time ever, New York City came under a flash flood emergency and churches in the Brooklyn Diocese did not escape the rising waters. Current News' Emily Druby reports from Woodside, Queens. Rugs soaked inside St. Mary's Winfield Church while water continues to drain from the still flooded lower church. Five feet of water filling doorways down from seven. The pastor father Christopher O'Connor took us on a tour of the damage. Water was just gushing from the outside in. I put a 40 gallon garbage can just trying to catch the water, but it filled up in 30 seconds. The street behind the Woodside Queens Church flooded so badly that this car ended up on a fire hydrant. The water coming so quickly, nothing in the lower church could be saved, including the brand new Adoration Chapel with a one of a kind tabernacle monstrance and restored 150 year old pews. A lot of my people were crying this morning. It was really a work of art and it was a beautiful place of prayer and now it's underwater. With the help of Jesus and, and um, the Virgin Mary will overcome this. Wednesday's storm dumping between three and eight inches of rain across Brooklyn and Queens, leaving clergy and parishioners to clean up the mess, including here at Cathedral Prep. I came down here to the back door uh, where there was a massive amount of water that was coming in through the doors, downstairs and into the cafeteria. Rector President Father James Caroli explained the water now drained, but the damage remains. Destroyed floors, ceilings, and items. In Bath Beach, Brooklyn, St. Francis Cabrini spent the morning clearing their flooded church. While in Williamsburg, the team at Our Lady of Mount Carmel draining both the parish hall and school. In Woodside, Queens, Emily Druby, Currents News. The MTA is slowly restoring subway service, beginning with the lettered lines after historic flooding all but shut down the system. Passengers at this 28th Street station baffled as a deluge of water poured onto the tracks. Roughly 17 to 18 trains were stranded last night due to the flooding, forcing first responders to evacuate hundreds of commuters. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people are without power in the tri-state area. New York and New Jersey utility companies reporting at least 85,000 outages. Responding to the torrential rain, Governor Kathy Hochul, together with Mayor Bill de Blasio, vowed to focus efforts on recovery and prevention. Because of climate change, unfortunately, this is something we're going to have to deal with with great regularity. And we want to let assure all New Yorkers that we're prepared for this and we'll do everything we can in our power to protect human life and property. Overnight, Governor Hochul declared a state of emergency for New York City and all counties affected by Ida, ordering state emergency response teams to work with federal and local partners in recovery efforts. New York State lawmakers are extending the eviction moratorium following a special session Wednesday. The state Senate passed the bill 38 to 19, with the Assembly voting 80 to 60 in favor. It will now go to Governor Hochul's desk. She has spoken in favor of the extension leading into the vote. The new law will keep renters in their homes through January 15th of 2022. A final farewell to America's first Haitian-born bishop. The mass of Christian burial was held Thursday for Bishop Guy Sansarik. Our Jessica Easthope reports from the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph. The loss of a gentle, patient, and holy priest leaves a great void in the Diocese of Brooklyn. That's what those who knew Bishop Guy Sansarik best said Thursday at his mass of Christian burial. I know him with humility and uh, kindness. He's a good man for me. The Mass was held at the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph. Men and women religious, as well as family, friends and parishioners, came to mourn the man they say lived life with an important purpose. In the days leading up to his death on August 21st, Bishop Sansarik was doing what he always did when the people of Haiti needed help, mobilizing quickly and turning all of his attention to recovery after the devastating earthquake. And his legacy, Haitian people has to be more involved it's not only to make collection, but to sustain hope for Haitian people. When it came to uplifting the Haitian people, both in Haiti and here in the Diocese of Brooklyn, Bishop Sansarik's work was never done. A point of pride for Bishop Nicholas de Marzio, who called him a brother and confidant. He wants to show the advancement of the Haitian people to see that they've made it. They lived the American dream and they were successful. 
Bishop Sansarik focused on the resilience of the Haitian people and allowed those living here to hold tight to their roots. If we take the legacy of Bishop Sansarik, we have to help others not to forget Haiti. At the end of his funeral mass, the co-cathedral erupted in applause, people thanking him for his service to the diocese and Haitians everywhere. Bishop Sansarik's love and hope for the country and its people is his legacy. In Prospect Heights, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. By a 5-4 to four ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court decides to leave the Texas abortion law in place. Abortion rights groups were looking to block enforcement of the law, which bans the procedure at six weeks of pregnancy when a fetal heartbeat is detected. Signed by Governor Greg Abbott, it makes no exclusions for rape or incest, but it does allow exceptions for, quote, medical emergencies. Tens of thousands of Afghan refugees are now safely being resettled in the U.S. thanks to Catholic Charities. In just the last two months alone, Catholic Charities of Arlington, Virginia, has received 200 refugees. That's more than half of what they expected in the course of a year. The rush of new arrivals causing a scramble to secure the essentials. Tangibly, we, of course, provide access to safe, affordable housing first, first things first. Uh, we help kids get connected in school. We help the families uh, you know, get connected with medical homes to make sure that they have the health care that they need. We make sure that there's meal support so that not only is there, you know, nutritious food, but, you know, we try to make sure that it's culturally appropriate for wh wherever our families are coming from. Catholic Charities is also providing long-term support like English classes and job development. That is this Currents News update. The newscast will be back to its full length this fall when we move to our new studio. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news.